all atoms have both an atomic number and a mass number. The atomic number we abbreviate or symbolize with a capital Z and the mass number we abbreviate or symbolize with the capital A. The atomic number is the number of protons in an atom, in its nucleus. The mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. The atomic number is unique for each type of atom. So this means that any particular type of atom, like let's say carbon, all carbon atoms have the exact same atomic number and no other type of atom will have that same atomic number. The mass number, however, is variable. So it varies even among atoms of the same type. So this means that even if we have a set of carbon atoms, those carbon atoms will not have, they will not all have the exact same mass number. Their mass numbers will vary. The atomic number is one of the numbers that is always shown on the periodic table. The mass number, on the other hand, is never shown on the periodic table. In addition to that, there really isn't any way for us to predict the mass number for an atom unless we're given some information about the composition of the protons and neutrons in the atom. So let's say, let's look at an example. Let's think about carbon. Carbon's atomic number is six, and that means that all carbon atoms have six protons. Now, one thing that we haven't talked about in this discussion, because it doesn't really come up with atomic number or mass number, for any atom, the number of protons is always equal to the number of neutrons. So all carbon atoms have six protons, and they also all have six electrons. Let's make a note of that down here on the bottom. For any atom or for all atoms, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. And we talked about that in the previous video about how the number of positive charged particles always equals the number of negatively charged particles. So back to our example, if we have a carbon atom with an atomic number of six, that means it has six protons, and that means it has six electrons, and most carbon atoms have six neutrons. That's the most common number of neutrons for a carbon atom. Some carbon atoms, with their six protons and their six electrons, some of them have eight neutrons. That's the second most common number of neutrons for an atom. When we have two atoms of the same type, so we have two carbon atoms, for example, but with different numbers of neutrons, we call those atoms isotopes of each other. Isotopes are atoms of the same type, so that means that they have the same number of protons but they have different number of neutrons. In order for two atoms to be isotopes of each other, they have to have the same number of protons and different numbers of neutrons. When we have isotopes, or when we're trying to have a conversation about the different isotopes of carbon, we need to have a way of distinguishing this isotope from this isotope here. We can't just call them both carbon because that only tells us information about how many protons there are. It doesn't say anything about the number of neutrons. So when we're trying to talk about the different isotopes of carbon, there's two different ways that we can actually indicate the type, the particular isotope we're talking about. 
One way is to say the atom's name, in this case, carbon, and then um, with a dash afterwards, give the mass number. So that would be the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, the mass number. Six plus six is 12, so we would call this guy carbon 12. We would write it just like this, carbon dash 12, and we also pronounce that carbon 12. For our other isotope, again, we identify it by its name, carbon, and the mass number in this case, six protons plus eight, eight neutrons, this is carbon-14, which you may have heard of. We have a shorter way of indicating the different names of these isotopes, and that is to give the atomic symbol, so the symbol of the atom, which is an uppercase C. We haven't talked about atomic symbols yet, but we will. Um, but the symbol of the car carbon atom, which is the uppercase C, and then in the left-hand side, in the superscript position, we write the mass number like this. So we put the mass number up here. And we these, this notation, this is just a way of writing it in a shorthand notation. We would still pronounce this carbon 12 and we would still pronounce this carbon 14. So in general, for any given atom, we'll just use the letter X for a generic atomic symbol. Sometimes it's a two letter symbol, XX. We always, if we feel like it, we always put the mass number in the superscript position on the left-hand side. And occasionally, you'll see a number down here in the bottom as well. That is the spot that we reserve for the atomic number. If we feel like writing the atomic number, we would put it in here. Most chemists will never write the atomic number next to the symbol because the atomic number and the symbol of the atom represent the exact same thing. If we have a six in this position, we know that that means the carbon atom because all carbon atoms have six protons. And also if we have the letter C in this position right here, that means carbon as well. So to have these two together side by side is kind of redundant. Let's take a look at the periodic table. As I mentioned, all atomic numbers are shown on the periodic table. So let's look at the periodic table and see where you can find those atomic numbers. For most uh, elements on the periodic table, um, most periodic tables, the way that they're laid out, there will be two numbers in every box for every single atom. One of those numbers is the atomic number, and that atomic number is always going to be the whole number. So it is never a number with a decimal, it's just a number, and you'll notice that these numbers are always in absolute numerical order as you're going from left to right. So what I'm highlighting here are the atomic numbers. Now, sometimes some people think that this number here is the mass number. However, it is not the mass number. Kind of looks like it might be, but it's not. We will talk about what that number represents. But for now, all that we're going to say is that it's not the mass number. The mass number, as I said before, is never ever shown on a periodic table. But all periodic tables, unless they're you know artistic or decorative or something, all periodic tables will always have the atomic number as well as the atomic symbol at a minimum. They may or may not have the name of the element and they may or may not have this other number and they may have additional information as well, but at a minimum, they will always have the atomic number and the symbol. So let's practice putting all of this information together. Here is a table, it has a bunch of different information. We've got um, in the first column, the name of different atoms and some of them have been left out. In the next column, we have the number of protons for that atom and neutrons and electrons. And then on the very end here, we have the symbol. And so what we're gonna do is fill in the information that's missing on this data table. 
So let's start with the first row. It tells us that we have an oxygen atom, and the oxygen atom has eight protons, which means that it has eight electrons, because protons and electrons are always the same. It tells us that it has 10 neutrons, and over here for the symbol of oxygen, we're writing this, the letter symbol for oxygen, which is an O, and the mass number, which is protons plus neutrons, we're writing in the upper left-hand corner. So let's look at our next example. In this example, we're told that we have helium and that helium has two neutrons and we have to fill the rest of the information in. So in order to figure this out, let's go to the periodic table and find helium. Helium is located right here on the periodic table and we can see that it has an atomic number of two and its symbol is He. So let's fill in the atomic number of two means that it has two protons and also that it has two electrons because protons and electrons are always equal to each other. The symbol is He and in the upper corner we're going to write the mass number which is protons plus neutrons. For helium it's four. Here's our next example. We know that we're looking at a lithium atom and we have the symbol for lithium atom. We don't know anything about how many protons, neutrons, or electrons there are. But let's go to the periodic table and find lithium. The periodic table will tell us how many protons it has. Lithium is right here. Its atomic number is three, and that means that it has three protons. If it has three protons, it also has to have three electrons. What about the number of neutrons? Well, we know that the mass number is seven. Seven is the protons plus the neutrons. So if we have three protons, we must have four neutrons in order to get a mass number of seven. Here's our next example, six protons. We've done a few examples with six protons. This is our carbon atom. If there are six protons, there must also be six electrons. And the symbol for carbon with seven neutrons, six plus seven is 13, right here like that. For our next example, we have 16 protons. That means that we also have 16 electrons. We have a mass number of 32. Protons plus neutrons equals 32. 16 plus 16 equals 32. What about, what is this atom called? If we go to the periodic table, we find element with the symbol S, that is sulfur. And for our next example, 17 protons, that means that we have 17 electrons. 17 plus 18 is 35. Which atom has 17 protons? That's another way of saying which atom has a mass or an atomic number of 17. That is chlorine. Chlorine, and this is chlorine 35. For this example, we have 18 neutrons, 20 electrons. If we have 20 electrons, that means we also have 20 protons. If we have 20 protons and 18 neutrons, we have 38 for the mass number. Which atom has 20 protons? Calcium has an atomic number of 20. The symbol for calcium is CA. Here we have 39K. K is the symbol for potassium. Potassium has an atomic number of 19. That means it has 19 protons and 19 electrons. This has a mass number of 39. 19 plus 20 equals 39. For boron with six neutrons, boron has an atomic number of five, which means that boron has five protons, five electrons. The symbol is a capital B. Five plus six is a mass number of electrons. This is neon with 10 electrons, neon also has 10 protons, and with a mass number of 20, this neon has 10 neutrons. And last but not least, if we have 26 electrons, we also have 26 protons. 
The atom with 26 protons is iron, Fe. Symbol is Fe. And the mass number is 26 plus 29, which is 55.